Welcome back ladies and gentlemen. So for today's lesson, we are going to continue with the family unions and also functions of the family. Alright, so let's look at family unions. Alright, so in my previous video, we look at the definition for the term family and also the types of family. So you can look in the description and you'll see the link to that video. All right, so family unions, there are three main types of family unions that exist in the Caribbean, right? Four that exist in the world, but the fourth one, we're not going to discuss because we really don't recognize that union in the Caribbean, right? And I'm not going to say that union on camera, absolutely not. However, we'll be looking at the three main types of family unions. So the first one is most popular, the Christian religion believes in this one and they support it 100%. Well, that one is very good. So that one is marriage. Right? And this is a legal union between one man and one woman. Another name for the term marriage is called monogamy. Very good. So monogamy. That's the first type of family union, a legal marriage or a monogamous relationship. Good. Next type of family union now is, this is a very popular one too in the Caribbean. It's called, no, wrong, think again, correct. So that is the common law union. This is when a man and a woman lives together for five years or more and they are not married, right? That is called a common law union. This union is also recognized by law in Jamaica. So many persons, especially some of the males, they believe that they shouldn't get married because they don't want to have certain responsibilities. However, the government many years ago in Jamaica pass a law that recognizes common law union, right? The next one now, not so popular, however it exists, especially among young couples that are not yet ready to live together. Look, and I'm going to give you a minute. All right, so now that you've thought about it, the next family union is the visiting relationship, right? This is when a man and a woman is in a relationship. However, they are not living together, but they visit each other. The man usually visits the woman to satisfy sexual needs and also give her money or give her money for the children. It can work vice versa too. The lady can visit visit the man, right, to allow the child to look for him or collect money or also satisfy his or her sexual needs. So those are the three types of family unions. Good. Now we are going to look at the functions of the family. Right? So the functions of families can be categorized in three, sorry, four main categories. I was a little bit distracted away. So the functions of the family can be categorized in four main categories. Good. List them. Let me hear them. One. Very good. Two. That's excellent. Three. That is awesome. Four. Think again, man. Four. Good job. Give yourself a clap. That's very good. So the four main family functions, one is procreation, as you said a while ago. And the procreation is simply the continuation of the human race. This is where the family produces children, produces babies, produces other human beings to continue the human race. So that's excellent. So the next important family function is socialization. 
socialization. What? This is very, very important because the family is the first agent of socialization. School and religious institutions also help with socialization. What is socialization? Socialization is simply where the family teaches you how to function in society. So they teach you how to be a good citizen. So certain norms and mores you are taught through the family. For example, things like saying please, good morning, excuse me, thank you, being courteous to people, right? You are taught right from wrong. So, as an individual, as a human being, while you're growing, you already know right from wrong, right? And the family have some things that we call norms. These are unwritten rules in the family that you know. So your parents don't have a list of rules that they put on the fridge and say these are the norms. But some things, they are not written down, but you are taught them through socialization. And you know if you don't live up to them, if you break these rules, there are consequences very good so that's what socialization does next function is the economic function so the family functions as an economic unit which is extremely important because money is very important and very valuable to a family because families need need their needs and wants to be met Right? So family members go out there as monetary contributors or as breadwinners, go out there work, bringing money for the family so that the family members' needs and wants can be met. Certain basic needs like food, clothing, shelter, education, these needs are met. Understand that, ladies and gentlemen? So that is how the family functions as an economic unit. Good? Next function, which is equally important is emotional all right so the emotional slash psychological function right this is extremely important because members of the family must feel loved must feel wanted must feel that their emotional needs are being met that's their mind and their heart so as members of a family, you must have somebody in the family that you can talk to. You know, they could help you with your problems, help you to limit stress, to make stress in your life be at this minimum, right? So emotional and your psychological well-being that is heavily rested on the family. Like for example, you had a bad day at school and you go home, you're supposed to go and talk to your mother, your father, your sibling and aunt and uncle depending on the type of family that you live in. So you must have that sort of support as a member of your family. Your family should provide that support for you. That is why if this is not being done, if there's no emotional or psychological support at home, many times children go outside and seek that emotional or psychological support. And that is when the girls, many of the girls become teenage mothers because they look for love in the wrong places, right? And they ended up getting pregnant. Some of the boys become juvenile delinquents too because they lack that support and they seek it elsewhere and they tend to get caught up in negative social activities and they become juvenile delinquents. So all four functions are equally important. Some persons might be wondering if any is more important than, than any. I would say no. I would say all four are important because without any one not being met, then there can be problems in the family. So if human race is not being continued, problem can arise, right? Because there will be no people in the world because remember that as people get old, they die. And even now, persons are not even, a lot of persons are not living until they are old to die, right? And they're dying young too. So we need people to continue being born. Baby, that is good. Socialization, remember this teaches you how to function. So that is important. Economic unit needs must be met. 
And if the family can't meet its needs, its needs, that's where the government comes in with social services. For example, in Jamaica, we have the PARC program, right? We have the NIS National Insurance Scheme for Senior Citizens. Good. Emotional support is very important because we need our well-being to be taken care of. Thank you guys for watching.